Paranormal in Pennsylvania may discuss topics such as suicide, murder, and other potentially upsetting things. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Paranormal in Pennsylvania, where we discuss history and haunts. And today, we be wrapping up Season 2. I'm Sarah. I'm Erica. And I am David. Let's get into it. So, we in it now. Season 2. Let's first talk about our overall favorite episode of season two. What was your guys' favorites? Ooh, um, I really liked the zombie apocalypse episode, but I wouldn't say that's my actual favorite haunted location. Uh, I did really enjoy all the stories from the Shawnee Inn, so that may actually be my favorite. What about you, Erica? Okay, so I think... I, I do think I really like the zombie apocalypse too because of the fact that it was like it was like an open dialogue which I thought was really cool to do but I think place I did really like talking about the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh because I did not know that was haunted for my entire four years there and so it was kind of cool to get to hear those stories yeah I also really liked the zombie apocalypse I also liked it because we partnered with other podcasts and I think they're perspectives were so cool uh, but I think maybe my favorite one was the Smurl haunting and I just thought it was really cool to get to read a book that was written firsthand by the people experiencing the haunting yeah and it also helped expand you know what we were covering because it was the first demon so I thought that was really cool and people know a lot about Ed and Lorraine Warren but not the lesser known ones oh, the Smurl house was a really good episode too and the hauntings there are really cool. I think the reason why we all liked the zombie apocalypse episode as well is just because of the silliness of it. You know, discussing a kind of apocalyptic scenario and what we do. Yeah. So it's just a joke to you guys then? <laughs> no. Seven days to die in real life. Yeah, taking yeah. you both off my apocalypse team. <laughs> I just found it insane that people thought that they'd just find hand grenades everywhere. How common of an item is that for people that are picking that? Like, yeah. Do you have like a case of them in your house? What, what, are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Right. I agree. So what about your favorite entity of season two? Ooh. So like if you had a favorite ghost, I can start to give you guys some time to think because I'm the one that prepared the questions. So for me, it's the wife in the Hill Physic house because she was not allowed to be in the house in her life. So she haunts the gardens, and it's like a constant reminder of her being there, but she's still not going in the house. Like, it's still affecting her after life, but I think it's just so petty, like, oh, you didn't want me here? Well, guess what? I'm going to be here forever. Yeah, that yeah. was a cool story. That was a good story. And um, have you ever, have you noticed that uh, somebody had the questions to prepare and then didn't <laughs> divulge the questions to the rest of the team? And so now it's Word. like on the spot, ready, set, go. We're doing it live. <laughs> Evidently. Um, so that entity is... I, I do love the pettiness. I am here for the drama. But um, I still... I, so one of my favorite entities, the demon from Smurl House, was really cool and also really scary. So that was a, a very interesting entity. I did enjoy the primates from the candle shop. Um... Oh my goodness. In Swift Water, Pennsylvania. Because the water there is very fast. <laughs> what about you, Erica? So, again, I have two. I think one of my favorites was from the Oosterhout Library from the beginning of the season. The employee that used to work at the library, I thought that was such a cute story that he would just go around and mess with the current employees. Um, and then, of course, I have to bring up the squonk. I have to bring up the squonk. I think that has to be my favorite. Yeah, I was going to say, while I didn't initially think it, when you mentioned Forest Fiends with Twice the Terror, I was like, the gee -woggle, the one that just goes and wreaks havoc for no reason. Yes. Definitely. It's a theme, I guess, for me. I like the petty people. <laughs> so, anything else on season two? Yeah, I really liked all the collabs we did this season. I thought that was really fun. That was like such a cool thing to get to work with different podcasts and, and even um, No Shelf Control. That was a really cool collab to be able to read a book in relation to the episode we were doing. 
Yes, I enjoyed the collaborations, but I guess like the low note of this season for me was the number of places we went to that we just couldn't get into. That yeah. they were either supposed to be open and they just weren't, or they changed hours very quickly. Yeah, so that's interesting because those were both of the goals that we mentioned in our season one recap, actually, that we wanted to do collaborations, which we did with Twice the Terror, Horror Hour with the Hannahs, and The Baddies, and No Shelf Control. So go check them all out on Instagram. But also we said that our goal was to go to more places in person. And we went to 20 of the 24 places that we covered. Two of the places that we covered, or two of the four places that we missed are currently private, so we're unable to go. But you're right, of all of the places that we covered, there was a significant amount of places that we couldn't go into, which was frustrating because we tried to go there. We tried our best, but we couldn't get in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like things happening the day of like the green county almshouse situation where the week before it had been open for hours and then the day of they switched to appointment only which was sad right and we definitely still have to go there yeah well i think that that could be a cool part of a season three wrap up if we think of all of the places we didn't actually get to go inside for season two We can try to add them back to our list if we have time to go back and we can talk about it in season three wrap. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we could do that. Or I'd be down to do a just a special feature of like, especially if it's a really good place. Of just like make it a season three episode of Oh my gosh, we went there and uh holy crap, the place was scary. Right, especially if we can get some ghost hunts going. I know there's a few ghost hunting groups that have offered to collaborate with us, so that would be really cool. I played a lot of Phasmophobia. I'm ready. Yeah, I think that makes us absolutely (laughs) not ready, (laughs) since all we've done is play a video game. (laughs) Yes, I. That was in jest. I think. I think when we do our first one, I'm going to be terrified just because it's the first one we're doing. Like, I think I'll get used to it and it'll be great, but the first one is going to be rough for me. What is our Instagram tagline? One scaredy cat, one skeptic, and one horror enthusiast. (laughs) And no one could see me point to Erica, David, then myself. (laughs) Yeah, I think the scaredy cat identified themselves. Yeah, correct. (laughs) Very clearly there. Listen, I'm not hiding a single thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I definitely think that that's a season three goal for me, is to be able to do a ghost hunt rather than us just going to the sites and bringing our equipment, but an actual overnight somewhere would be super cool to do. Fort Mifflin. We have already covered that site, sir. (laughs) Well, you didn't say it had to be a place we haven't covered. Now you're throwing caveats. No, I know what you mean. To go back and do it would be cool. Yeah, like the Alms House or Fort Mifflin. Um, some of these places that are reportedly really haunted that do also have ghost hunts that like sponsor ghost hunts. That's awesome. I think that's a great place to start. That's my point. Yeah. My, one of my goals for season three is to expand the paranormal beings that we cover, if possible. Like, we covered aliens this season and i think that was cool we got some witches thrown in there we got the cryptids of course from the forest fiends episode but i think it's cool to try to think of what else can we bring in like i don't know wizards or goblins or something like that yeah that would be cool sorcery dark magic right or even just to hit more of the lesser discussed ones like more vampire stories more witch stories Ghosts are cool, but it's nice to have the variety as well. Yeah, but the vampire stories are really cool too. They are. I really, I really enjoy hearing those. I feel like they're some of the scariest. I think that we've covered, and they really, I feel like, grab my attention. That's what I was gonna say. It's the vampire ones are by far the scariest theme to me because they just demand respect, or else they're gonna kill you. Yeah. Yeah, and we had what. Uh, New Orleans and Erie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts on season two or goals for season three? Goal for season three for me is going to be much of the same. We've been working on our our sound for season two. And now that we've incorporated some videos, I want to start looking into 
how to do better video and cameras and that kind of setup. So research for sure. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think one of my goals is, again, with the editing, I just want to continue getting better with that. But I do want to start adding like little elements to, now that we're doing video, like little elements to the video, like adding in sounds and like kind of like making it more fun than just like just us, just our recording. I think that would be super fun. Other than that, I feel like just more of the same, like more collaborations, more topics. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If anyone is interested in collaborating with us, we're super open to it. We had four collaborations this season, four different people that we collaborated with, five total collaboration episodes. So we're super open to it. We're looking for people to go ghost hunting with. So if you want to be friends in real life <laughs> and podcast <laughs> friends, you can find us on Instagram at Paranormal in Pennsylvania, or you can email us paranormalinpennsylvania at gmail.com and we will respond yeah. yeah and don't worry for the people that want to go gust hunting erica has offered to be the sacrificial lamb yeah i mean that just makes the most sense i think <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to defend yourself and be like no, no i don't want this listen i i accept my fate <laughs> so i know we said our favorite stories but to wrap up the wrap up if you had to tell people to listen to one episode of season two, what episode would you say you absolutely have to listen to this? That's a really good question. Um, gosh, part of me wants to say the Merle House because of the demon, because that's our first demon. The other part of me enjoyed the Alms House because it had a lot of very spooky stories. I guess it's like I'm almost giving like a top three here because, or top two. I'm going to say top two. I can't pick a third off the top of my head. Those are your top. Erica, what about you? I I think the Pennsylvania Wilds. Because I think that's like pretty representative of PA. And I think it was a really good episode. There was a lot of variety. So yeah. All of this stuff about aliens has been coming out. Yes. So it feels very appropriate for the current climate with spooky things. I mean, just today, David, I don't know if you saw this, Erica. David sent me an article about allegedly this alien that was found in what peru peru and it was brought before like or the mexican government he had pictures and such uh don't know if it's true or not could be a hoax at this point we don't know oh no i did not but a lot that. of news or a lot of articles were published on it right and there was it, supposedly the dna is not terrestrial dna which i'm specifically interested in as a scientist Right. What does that mean? What does that look like? I don't know. That's why I was like, what is this article? What does that mean? It's not terrestrial DNA. Right. I guess there could be sequences that we've never seen or something. I don't know. But people that, you know, have, believe in alien conspiracies do say that our junk DNA is alien. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is interesting. But it's also interesting, the photos from that today were literally like the little green man. Yeah. Like, looked very akin to it. Oh, I'll have to look that up. That's interesting. Yeah, I'll send you the article. But all that to go around to say, I do think that the Pennsylvania Wilds is a really good episode because aliens. Yes. And wasn't there also a vampire hunter in that one? I think, yes. I believe yes. so. Yeah. If not, it's in forest feeds. Ooh, now you got me questioning. One of the two. I know. Either way, they're both cool episodes. Go listen to them both. <laughs> and let us know where you think we should cover next. We'd love to hear about the smaller places that we might not initially he have heard of. Obviously, we know of the big places like Gettysburg, Eastern State. But a lot of the smaller places, like Green County Almshouse, for example, turn out to be really cool. So reach out to us and stay spooky. Woo! Spooky.